So, hello, my name's Adam Philthorpe um, from the BCS, and we're here just having a few of these chats with people all around the NHS and that community. And today we have James Freed, who's the CIO of Health Education England. Um, hello, James. Hi, Adam. Um, we are just going to have a quick 10 minute chat around um, some of the issues in light of, of course, recent developments, but we're actually a little bit more about what we think is happening in the future. Um, just, a, just a sense check, though. That we've all been talking about the sort of rapid adoption of digital and acceleration of digital. Um, has that been in your experience over the last few months and weeks? Um, yes and no, I suppose. So, so um, uh, COVID-19 has forced us all to work from home. And uh, when you've got a, a, a massive seismic shock to the way in which you do business, you need to respond quickly. And there have been some uh, uh, business um, activities that we've have, have to undertake, uh, having meetings, for instance, um, which um, require uh, doing so at distance, uh, which requires you using digital. Um, we've seen a massive upsurge in the uh, number of sessions launched on our e-learning for healthcare platform, for instance, in across health and social care. We had um, more than we, uh, in fact, this year, we've had more launches than we had in the entirety of last year. And uh, just on COVID-19 uh, related content alone, we've had more than a million session launches in May. I think we had 2.4 million total session launches in May. It's just absolutely nuts. Um, and the reason, so yes, on from that perspective, you know, there, there has been a, a, um, a tremendous upsurge in using some technologies, particularly where you have no choice. Um, the, the reason why I say no is um, th that is, um, it's forced uh, uh, adoption of some technologies where we have no choice, but what we haven't done is fundamentally change the culture in which we operate. Yes. And we know that um, in terms of uh, extracting the greatest value of digital, which is you know the, the opportunity that um, data information knowledge and technology offers the human race is colossal and it's doubling every two years. Moore's law still applies. Um, and the big constraint is not the opportunity that technology offers us, it's our ability as human species to keep up. Uh, there's a large component of that, which is down to knowledge and skills. Another huge amount, which is down to culture, attitude, ethos, um, etc. And um, although we are starting to see some change, predominantly because everyone's saying, ah, oh, uh, this digital lark that actually is something that is going to affect my life and is something I need to maybe give uh, a little bit more attention to. It's not fundamentally changed the way people solve problems. So um, the NHS is still a hierarchical set of organisations. There's still a high degree of accountability expected uh, and therefore um, we, we still work in an organisation or in organisations where innovation is a rarity um, and failure is definitely a no-no. Uh, and uh, those are things that are going to have to change more slowly over time. That's really interesting. So culturally, I think what, what, what you're saying is we've seen our hands being forced. People didn't, didn't go towards digital and say, oh, we need to do it. You know, it wouldn't be great if because it will unlock opportunity. It's more well, I can't get into work, so I need to find a way of doing it. And actually, the growth that we've seen, and I don't want to be flippant with the success of home working, but that's almost a facilities issue. It, it's, it's not unlocking the power of digital to make radical change to health and social care. And you're arguing that's a, that's a cultural issue. Wrapped up in that as well is, is there something about uh, the danger of a two-tiered workforce. There's those that are really applying themselves. It's amazing to hear the amount of people are trying to self-educate around some of the issues around COVID-19. Yeah. But what about those that aren't? That's an interesting one. I mean, I don't really see us having a two-tier workforce, more of a normal distribution, I suppose. I yeah. I, um, but mostly because I don't think of digital uh, maturity as uh, something you have or something you don't have. Although I think that many of us will point at others and say uh, and label each other uh, like that. Um, I th I, I'd like to think that I'm digitally literate and digitally mature. And yet I know there are still things that I need to learn and I learn every day. You know, I'll, I'll see a video or I'll talk to a colleague or I'll just make a, a leap of logic and think, aha. Uh -huh. uh, um, and I'm sure that's the same for most of us. Uh, um, some, I suppose at its heart, 
what digital maturity is is for me is um i suppose it's no different to a to a lot of things it's a sense of uh curiosity i want to find out yeah. i want to find out how i do things better and it's a sense of autonomy and and, and empowerment i feel able to to uh, to look to ask the question, I feel able to be curious um, to assuage that curiosity and go out and find it. Um, uh, and there are a number of different uh, learning and cultural models that are, are similar. There's one around mastery, autonomy, and I can't remember the third word now, but, it, but it's, it's similar. Um, um, so I don't see it as us having a two tier system. I do I do see us as having a um, a, a role in developing the cultures within organizations to support truly learning um learning organizations and learning uh, a learning workforce in fact in the health and care system it's more than a learning workforce isn't it we're interested in supporting our uh, patients carers the wider public also to learn and, and to take more responsibility for their and their and others care so um yeah 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 a massive cultural issue and uh, f from my perspective the, the that normal distribution is a thing that needs to shift up rather than necessarily say everyone who isn't currently digitally mature needs to be digitally mature and you just need to learn more yourself yeah yeah so there, there's a bit of a danger there for if, if we remove this this pressing need to do digital will we will we slip back culturally will we go back to to the old ways of thinking will problems be solved be they in the sort of clinical health and social care as well as more broadly are those those problems are going to be back to solve them in the old ways are we not going to embrace digital solutions as much is that a real danger do you think or do you think we've learned we've, we've pushed so far against that that we're we're sort of breaking through to the other side um I don't think it's about slipping back. I think it's about not making enough progress or not not taking advantage of the crisis um, uh, to achieve any change. Um, a great man once told me there's an algorithm. There's often an algorithm and A plus B plus C has got to be greater than D, uh, where D is uh, your resistance to change. So it needs to be um, there needs to be a, a big enough burning platform. There needs to be a dissatisfaction. Uh, with the current state of play, there needs to be a, uh, a, a an engaging uh, vision for the future that that you can sell to people, and you need to be able to express the first few steps. Another way of putting this is saying you need to talk to the head, the heart, and the arm. Um, uh, you know, it needs to make sense. You need to really want to get there, and you need to know what to do. Um, the, uh, my sense is we've made a huge amount of. Um, very relatively basic um, uh, steps that you talked about as being the facility stuff. It's the easy stuff and we've not necessarily done it in the right way. Um, uh, you know, we've pushed a lot of change because we had to. That's, that's all there is to it. Um, but uh, uh, and that burning platform was uh, as burning as you can get. You know, you couldn't work without suddenly doing some work online. Yeah. Um, uh, and the the it, it didn't really matter therefore how how um, difficult the first few steps uh, seemed, nor did it uh, have to be a hugely engaging vision for the future. That that um, that A step, that burning platform, was so colossal it was going to outweigh anything that was in that D bit, that resistance yeah. to change. Um, uh, as the crisis diminishes, as we start going back to work, perhaps as our day job starts coming back into play and we start all having that massive diversity of drivers that we had before COVID-19 came uh, came along and suddenly we had we had one driver for a good few weeks there. Um, uh, we'll start having to try and address those issues in exactly the same way again. I read a blog a few years ago, which changed my perspective of what digital readiness really means and um, I was introduced to the word in this context um, of flexibility you know how do you help organizations and individuals be flexible and, and digitally mature organizations and people are much much more able to respond very very quickly to changing circumstances now we've not had a choice but to be flexible for some parts of our working practice when COVID-19 hit what being digitally mature means is as are we as individuals and are uh, the organizations we work in geared up to be flexible to uh, not only the massive burning platform threats but also the opportunities you know if we were a, if we were an industry which um uh, in the pri private sector would be looking for 
to exploit new market opportunities before our competitors do. And only if you're a flexible organization can you get in there quickly, restructure, reorganize uh, um, and invest in an opportunity before your competitors do. And and that that's how they work. Um, for us, that's, you know, exploiting an opportunity is no less important or valid just because we don't have competitors in the same way. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you think, lastly, off the off the back of this, and we've seen actually, we have a we have a big we have a larger voice. People want digital nicely solution. You know, we we we've got in there. We're talking talking more to the business now. How do we make good on that? What's your what's your optimistic vision therefore for the for the future? Certainly for health education in England. How do you see, you know, how do you see exploiting, as you put it, that that opportunity now to really march forward and really start to deliver against. What is the purpose of your organisation is to get everyone, you know, who super skilled, really, really starting to see the benefit of digital that changes, you know, AI and all these great things that we talk about away from the facility stuff and more towards what is the vision for the future as to where do you think we might be able to get the sort of results and these changing attitudes and cultures? Yeah, well, I think that the ultimate, uh, the ultimate endpoint the vision for organizations should be for digital not to be something that's tacked on or something that's special or different um you know truly advanced organizations don't think of digital as something extra you don't have a separate digital strategy or it strategy it's something that's just part of your business approach your business strategy so so my hope for the future is that is that our health and care organizations increasingly you know, across a place, across an integrated care system, think of the business outcomes they want to achieve and how best to achieve it and leverage the full advantage that that data, uh, digital technology and indeed other tools um, are able to uh, leverage in order to, to realise those outcomes better. I um, hope we start seeing uh, uh, management teams, senior teams, but just teams that are truly multidisciplinary, that take advantage of clinical expertise, um, patient perspective and user experience and uh, uh, digital expertise in order to solve problems. I hope we see leadership teams that are able to delegate decision making to the uh, point of expertise um, rather than slow things down in unnecessary governance and bureaucracy. And I hope we see um, a diminishment of ego so that organisations are able to appropriately apportion activity across those organisational boundaries, which historically we've not been so great at. Yeah, that's great. I seem to remember a government digital service ambition. The unit of delivery is the team. And I think you've just um, you've just put that rather smartly yourself. Thanks, no, thanks James. Thanks, thanks for your time. My absolute pleasure. Thank you.